one. All right. Okay, so we're gonna start by you guys writing five problems that FDR needs to fix uh, right away. Okay, um, Puji, Sam, do you guys have yours ready or? I have three. Okay, Sam, why don't you give me give me your give me one. one. Um, unemployment. Okay. I'm gonna put them in the chat here as a group. We'll we'll collect them all in the chat. Okay. All right, Puji, what you got? Um, I haven't worth anything yet. <laughs> oh no! All right, Kelvin, how about you, man? Uh, I don't really wait. FDR is like uh Frank uh, Franklin D Roosevelt, right? Correct. Yeah, he usually um, goes by he goes by his initials usually when people. Oh uh, okay. Uh, maybe he could like fix his like um like his way of like this like the three R system or something. Okay, so that's the solution he's going to use. What we're oh. trying to do is we're trying to come up with the um, priority of things he needs to fix. All right, um, Sam, what else What else you got, Sam? The economy. Okay, economy is really big. What specifically does, do we want to fix in the economy? The economy is like not one thing. The economy is like 100 things, right? So what um, specifically? Money management. Okay, so finance. Yes. Finance. There we go. All right. And um, okay. So think about the beginning of the of the Great Depression. What kicked off the Great Depression? What event? Uh, fear with losing money. Okay. That's. And what did that do when people were scared about losing their money in their with the banks? What it do you call that? Banks not have enough money. It's the right. bank run. A bank run. Okay. So bank run is a big problem. Okay, what else? That's not what happened. What's the problem on Black Tuesday? Um, isn't, wasn't everybody like uh, doing stocks? Like even like the civilians and all that? Like right. the regular people? Yeah, everyone's doing stocks. We have a huge stock market crash, right? Okay, what else is happening in the middle of the country? This dust bowl. Dust bowl, right? And um what problems did the dust bowl cause um agricultural problems right so we have food shortages right food shortages all right what else there's another really big problem oh here's fernanda she's here now um where are people living now oh they're up north right is it no. the Hoovervilles? Hoovervilles, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put homelessness. Not everybody's in a Hooverville, but Hoovervilles are like the worst example, right? Yeah. So homelessness with the Hoovervilles. All right. These are all like unemployment, finance, bank runs. Uh, what were you saying, Puja? I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, it wasn't me. Oh, who was that, Fernanda? That was Fernanda. Hey, Fernanda. Yeah, sorry. I forgot I wasn't on mute. <laughs> oh, um, okay. So these are all these, these are the big problems that FDR has to face, I think. These are all things that he's got to, he has to fix. Any president would have to fix these things. Fernando, are you with us? Turn on your camera. All right. Um, there you go, much better. All right, so um, he has to fix all of these things. Now, what we need to do is I wanna envision you guys, put yourselves in the minds of Roosevelt and you need to think, you've just been elected, how are you going to go about fixing it? What needs to be fixed first of all these problems? If you look on the chat, Fernanda, we have a list of them that we've been put on the chat. Okay, so what do these problems needs to be fixed first? What do we think? Uh, the bank run, finance and stock market. Okay. Why, um, Sam, why do you think that we need to solve that banking, the finance stuff first? Um, you can't solve unemployment unless you have like jobs and in order to have jobs and you have money to pay for the jobs. Okay, okay, all right. Um, why can't we, uh, well, Kelvin, do you agree with Sam or do you think we should solve something else first? Uh, I think I agree, I think, yeah. Okay. How about you, Pooja? Yeah. Oh, you guys are just agreeing because you don't know. 
You're agreeing because you don't know, right? What you should do is critically think about it. What's the most important problem that needs to get fixed? Homelessness, like food shortages. Okay. Would, would that be one? Sure, yeah. Homelessness and food shortages are pretty bad, right? Like if people can't eat, then they die. Right. Like, like, I don't really care if the bank is, you know, running a 2% margin. Like I care that I can feed my kid. Right. Like, um, so Kelvin, you said yeah. food, food shortages. And I think, I think food shortages feels like the most immediate one that you uh -huh. have to solve. Um, and maybe homelessness is also very immediate as well. Right. But what's the challenge? There's a challenge to this. Can we solve food shortages right away? No. No. Why not? Um, the all the land has been destroyed because of the Dust Bowl. It's going to take a couple of years in order for that land to be able to be harvestable. Yeah, that's a really big problem, right? The Dust Bowl has destroyed like five states, basically. Oklahoma is like sand now, right? So, um, you can like solve the ground and like dig it up and plant new stuff. But if the earth doesn't give you rain, then it's not solved. Like you have to sit and wait for rain. Even if rain, even if you have water and, and rain starts right away, you still need to wait for the food to grow, right? Like the fastest that you're gonna get this is the food's gonna have to take months and months and months, right? So food shortages are a real problem, but it's also a problem that you can't solve right away. What about homelessness? How easy is that to solve? How quickly do we need to solve that? Fernando, what do you think about homelessness? Like, like if we're gonna solve this thing, how long is it gonna take? I think it's gonna take a long time because there might be not that much occupation places for the people to live. I think I said that right. Yeah. Or yeah, I think it's just the places that they need to find to put the people in. Yeah. If if Chicago has the largest Hoovervilles in the country and the Hoovervilles of Chicago are like 80,000 people, right? You need to build a bunch of houses. You need to build all those houses. You need to move those people. You need to like, it's, it's, it's really hard. It's a super important problem. It's a problem that needs to get fixed, but it's also a problem that takes a lot of money and a lot of time. Like and all of, these, all of these problems lead back to finance, stock market, and money. <laughs> yeah. So in your notes, what I want you to do is start a fresh page. Start a fresh page. Sam, your, your um, instinct is correct. He has to start with the finance first for a couple of reasons. Okay, so on a fresh page, take your fresh, uh, fresh page, blank page, and, and divide it into four sections. We want divide to make it a letter. Um, this can all be part of S. You can you could just or put S at the top T of this one again. Or S. Or T. T, that's right. T. T is our new number for the day, right? Yes, it is. Okay. So um, yeah, make it divide your paper into four sections. I think it should be like rows, like four on top of each other. These are gonna be FDR's four big priorities, okay? In the first one, put finance. We're gonna call it finance, label it finance. Should we do columns or rows? No, I think rows work better because you're gonna be writing stuff in them, right? So you can, you know what? I'm not gonna manage your creativity. You can do <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sometimes students like to put them in boxes, you know, quarters. I, I don't, I don't, I don't really care that much. I would put them in rows. Okay, so the first one we're going to call finance. This is going to be the first thing that FDR fixes. Okay, he's going to fix finance because a, you can, it's the root of all the other problems, right? And b, you can fix it like almost instantly. You don't have to like wait for things to grow or build things, okay? All right, in number four, in the fourth one, the bottom one, put homelessness. Homelessness. This one is the slowest one, okay? This is the one that requires the most money 
the most time, it's the most difficult. So put homelessness in the number four spot. All right, in the number two and three spots, these are basically tied, but in number two, let's put unemployment. And in number three, let's put agriculture. Now, let's be, I wanna be clear here. It's not like FDR is like solving one and then checking it off and then moving to the next one. That's not what's going on. The US is a big place. We have a lot of people, right? So he's working on all four of them at the same time. I'm just kind of putting them in the order that he prioritizes them um, because he's, he's gonna put most of his attention in this order. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so let's, let's fill in this first box first, the first one. Um, I'm gonna pull my screen here for you. Um, okay, so in that first box, the first thing we need to put in here is the Economy Act. FDR is gonna pass something called the Economy Act. Um, and he does this like the very first day he's president basically, like almost instantly he passes the Economy Act. And the Economy Act does something that's a little bit weird. It cuts the wages of all the government workers, including the veterans. Remember all those war veterans, right? FDR is gonna actually cut their benefits even more than Hoover. Yeah, right away. Why do you think he's having to do that? Um, he's, he's needing to require to use that money for different problems. Yeah. He needs to free the money up is what he needs to do. And he can't, he, he just can't do anything unless he frees that money up. So he needs to free that money up to go spend it on other things. Now, how many people in the United States you think are like, okay, cool, go ahead and cut my paycheck, <laughs> right? Like nobody is saying that. But FDR gets on the radio and he explains what needs to happen. And he says to the people and he says, look, I need to free this money up so I can start these other programs. He's like, I'm not gonna lower your wages forever, but we do need to lower them for a little while in order to free this up. As it turns out, when he explains things kind of calmly and explains what he's gonna be doing, the American people are like, okay, let's give him a shot, right? That, that when th there's this, this crazy idea that when you like talk to people like adults with respect, they actually act like adults and, and are okay with making decisions, right? A lot of people like aren't scared of doing difficult things. They're just scared of being forced to do difficult things, right? So he does this. He also starts something called deficit spending. And you need to use this word here in your in your name. Deficit spending is where um, the country spends more money than it has. The country is going into debt. Now, you guys don't have credit cards and debt and stuff yet, right? But how many of you guys would assume that if the country's in debt, that's a bad thing? Raise your hand if you think that it's a bad thing for the country to be in debt. You say if the country's in debt, it's a bad thing, right? Okay, so you guys are answering exactly the way most Americans answer. Most Americans think that debt is automatically bad and it's not, okay? And the reason why is because most people encounter debt like personal debt. Okay, so they're, um, they're looking at like a credit card bill, right? Like I owe $10,000 on my credit card. That's really, really bad. I'm going to be paying that thing off for years and years and years. I'm going to end up paying like way more than it's worth. Like it's, it's bad, really, really bad. It basically only just drains my paycheck. Okay. A country's debt is different. A country's debt is good debt. Okay, mostly. It's usually good debt. And the reason why is because the country is taking out a loan and then investing and growing the economy. Right? There's a difference between me having a credit card bill that I, I owe a ton of money on and me having a loan to start a business. 
And then I use that loan to make a business and, the, and then I start bringing in money, right? Those are not the same kind of debt. If I have a $100,000 business loan and a $10,000 credit card loan, you might think that the credit card is better because it's only 10,000, but it's worse because the credit, a $10,000 credit card is just draining your money away. A $100,000 business loan is growing your money. So countries' debts are usually good usually, right? Later in, in the future time, uh, future timeline, the United States will spend like $50 million and we'll go into that $50 million and we're gonna invent this little thing called the internet, right? And, and then the internet goes on, the US government invents this internet thing and then they just release it out to the world and they say, hey, here's an internet, why don't you guys use that, right? And the whole world goes, whoa. Right. And then pretty soon we're all sharing cat videos and we're all zooming our history classes and the economy is making 11 kajillion dollars off the Internet. Right. The government spent 50 50 million dollars and made 11 kajillion dollars. Does that make sense? FDR understands that he's the first president to do deficit spending. And every single president since him does it. Okay. All right, the next thing FDR needs to fix is banking reform. So keep this in our same top quarter. In that same quarter, we're gonna do banking reform. So what FDR does is he starts a bank holiday, a bank holiday. He basically just shuts the banks down, all of them in the entire country. He basically just says, no banks are open, all banks are closed, done and he shuts them all down. Now this may not, this may seem a little bit weird, right? But what he does is more important. What he does next is he gets on the radio and he talks to the American people. And he says, bank runs are caused by you guys freaking out. I'm going to teach you about banks so that you don't freak out about it. And he teaches people how banks work, right? At this time, a lot of Americans, only, only like 30% of Americans graduated high school at this time period. Only like 30% of Americans graduated high school. 20% of Americans don't even know how to read, right? Only like 5% of Americans know how a bank works, right? So FDR is going to teach them and he's gonna say, this is how banks work. This is why the bank doesn't have your money, right? It doesn't mean your money's gone. It just means that your money's been invested. So he does this. And then he starts a very, very important organization called the FDIC. The FDIC stands for the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And what this corporation does, it's um, part of the United States government and the United States government insures your money in the bank. So Fernanda, let's pretend that you've put $15,000 in the bank, right? You've been saving up for a while, you have this money in the bank. And then you're in our little town, there's a bank run, Amanda pulled all her money out, Fuji pulled all her money out, Sam pulled all his money out. And so when you go and try to pull your money out, the bank is gone, the bank is bankrupt, right? We had a bank run and now we're all screwed, right? But you were stuck with your money still in the bank and so you lost your money. The FDIC protects you. Because now you would just go to the government and you'd say, hey, I have $15,000 in this bank and it shut down. And the government would look at it and they say, yep, you're right. Here you go. Here's your money. Okay. So Franklin Roosevelt shuts the banks down and explains how banking works and then insures all the private money in the banks. So the FDIC insures you up to $250,000, which covers basically everybody. <laughs> right? It covers almost everybody in the country. Um, these two things right here, and then he opens the banks up and the banks stop having bank runs. We haven't had a bank run since 1933. And this is why. He solves the problem in a day, basically. Right? By the end of the week, this problem is completely solved, 100% completely solved. The next thing, and this is the last thing we're gonna put up in that top quarter, is securities regulation. This is the stock market. 
So write securities regulation and then put in parentheses stock market. He makes it illegal. Um, he makes speculation illegal. No more speculation. All right, who, who can remind me what speculation means in the context of the stock market? What is, is speculation? That, is that pulling out loans and then putting them into the stock market? Yeah, it's buying stocks using loans, which is very, 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 very bad. And that caused Black Tuesday, that caused the crash of 1929. It was a terrible, terrible, terrible nightmare. He makes that illegal. He shuts down Wall Street and makes that illegal. And he says, no more speculation, bad Wall Street, bad, bad Wall Street. And, um, and then they restart the stock market and it never has this problem again. This is a huge deal. FDR solves the entire financial crisis in you know, basically you know, a week or two. Within, within the first couple of weeks, within, I don't even think it was two weeks. I think it was like four days. Within the first like four or five days, he solves the entire financial problem, which means the banks are stable, the stock market is stable, right? Wealthy businesses, all the businesses, wealthy people, they're calmed down. So now they can go about growing their business and trying to employ people and build things again. Okay, for this top quarter, let's give him a grade. What grade do you think he needs to get in this? In this? We're gonna grade all four of these. We're gonna give him a grade, A, B, C, D, F. What do we think? Does he get an A, a B, C, D, or F? Put your grade in the chat. All, all six of you, put your five of you, put your grade in the chat. Are you in the chat? All right, Pooja gives him an A, Fernanda gives him an A, Sam an A minus, Sam, okay. All right, Amanda, Kelvin? Kelvin says an A. Amanda, only a B plus, okay. All right, only B plus. I also give him an A. I think this is a pretty solid A. He takes the biggest problems and solves them almost instantly. Right, that's, there's very few times that you can do that, <laughs> right? Most problems in the country take a lot, it's much more difficult to solve. And he solves these problems really, really quick. Amanda and Sam, Amanda first, why did you give him such a bad grade? Well, I don't think it's a bad grade, but. Okay, I'm yeah, you're right. B plus <laughs> isn't a bad grade, but yeah. what do you, yeah, what do you, um, why did you give him the lowest grade? I think he could have done better. You think like, so? Um, I think he could have given out. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> yeah? He maybe could have yeah. given money to regular people, to like normal people yeah. or something. Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or small businesses, maybe, or something like that. How about you, Sam? Yeah. The reason why I said an A- minus is because like I put in like other people's like views like imagine like, being like a governor worker or like a veteran and you have to like think like your paycheck just okay. got cut okay. and so like he's like also like while well, helping a bunch of people some other people are also not going to be the happiest so okay. that's why I didn't give him an A because he didn't okay. please everyone okay yeah he did cut veterans worker veterans pay and, and government workers pay he did cut them and I'm sure they were not happy about that I'm sure they were pretty upset about it. So I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, I would still give him an A just because the problem was so big and he solved it so perfectly that we've never had the stock market crash for that again. It's been a hundred years and it's never happened. And bank runs, we haven't had any bank runs in a hundred years. So that's a pretty darn good solve, right? All right, um, this is where we're gonna stop here today. We're gonna stop here today. We're gonna